Hello, world of Facebook and later YouTube too, which is under the same name as what my Facebook my Facebook profile is. If you are not connected with me there, I do share a lot of content, which I sometimes share to my page. And where misfits fit, home for soulful seekers, was what the group used to be called. Actually, so uh, peaceful inner warriors united is in the name now after where misfits fit for all who stand uh, oftentimes don't fit necessarily and that's where we say lights camera action i am excited to play with you today and was reading my own book ironically which sounds maybe a bit egoic but actually it's because i'm putting together a special pa practice pilot program each week based on the content from the book and what I shared last week with my friends and participants within the program is the fact that I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to bring in extra content because I was always used to doing that and I had a lot of emotional scar tissue around the special practice pilot program because special is an acronym that came to me just as Peaceful Inner Warriors United did. So I am working through that myself. And as I was reading this to put together that presentation, I thought, hey, you know, it would be really cool for others to know what Peaceful Inner Warriors United means to me and why it has become such a powerful opportunity for others to be able to join, which you can do on Telegram too. Peaceful Inner Warriors United Assembly is the group where you can actually be part of a phenomenal chat where we've got some really switched on folks that contribute and share what resonates for them. And we keep the con video game out of it because we don't need the drama that's only going to keep us focused on a lower level perspective. We want to be focused on higher level experiences where we can be creative instead of reactive. So I'm just going to share this over to where misfits fit home for soulful seekers so that others there can join us here also and i am then going to dig into chapter what chapter is this 17 on page 89 but we're gonna kick off on page 91 in fact so here we go that is shared now so uh, you'll be able to see it there or on my uh, profile if you have requested me as a friend i don't oftentimes go and accept a lot of friends because there's so many trolls so if you send me a message as to why you want to be connected and uh, how we resonate with one another, um, then I'm more likely to actually accept your profile. But if it's just a bot that wants to be able to uh, gain access to all of those who I am connected to, I'll not accept. So I have uh, <laughs> some stuff on my face that is shiny, but we're going to just carry on and say that we all have our own insecurities until we build inner security. And inner is the acronym we're going to get into as I read this on the third day of my stay when I got locked away, as I shared two days ago, as the last message that I posted to my YouTube channel. And I would highly encourage you check that out because three years ago was when, without a doubt, my world flipped upside down and I no longer wore the crown until I did again, because I wasn't going to let some doctor diagnose me and tell me who I needed to be because of what box and label mm -hmm. I needed to be. So here we go. Let's dive in to what it means to be a peaceful inner warrior, united and untied from the matrix. Matrix, wear matrix because she doesn't know better until she does and then can do better, yes. Every journey begins with the first step from precisely where we are, and after sitting in judgment of myself and those who didn't get me for longer than I'd like to admit, I'm finally ready to share what it means to be a peaceful inner warrior, united and untied from the not nows that need no longer steal our power. Peaceful is an acronym, which means each letter has its own meaning. 
Passion is the spark of light dancing in our hearts that shine through eyes willing to face the lies of what was previously oblivious and now made obvious because we stopped fearing the unknown. Passion is an object of someone's love, liking, or desire, and is said to be connected to the suffering and death of Jesus, which I see to be the I am in me that calls me to life as it does you too. Passion is hard to control and is often activated by is often activated in our relationships with another. Passionate love is intense and can be blinding, which Bruce Lipton refers to as the honeymoon effect in a book by the same title, which implies our dysfunctions compensate for the other for a time, but unless we deal with our feels, they'll resurface with a passionate vengeance. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is an intense feeling of excitement we can either express outwardly or enjoy within ourselves behind a smile that gets others curious. It bubbles up from the heart when we look forward to something we anticipate will benefit us or others and gives us a sense of significance. Authenticity. Authenticity is rare in today's fictitious reality, but it's time for us to take the masks and personas off so that we can be our true and full selves without reservation. Authenticity is based in truth and living in alignment with higher ideals that help us lift the lid on our own self-image. It requires us to be honest with ourselves and others which can feel vulnerable, but is worth it in the end when we come to know the only one we sleep with every night and wake up to start each new day with as winners of the 86,400 second lottery each day gifts us with. Clarity. Clarity is connected to the vision we hold of ourselves, the world, and our place within it. It's about daring to see the literal world we live in, as well as the mythic, symbolic, and energetic elements underlying the story that raises our perspective to a higher vantage point. True clarity comes from combining what we see and feel to create a vision we are willing to stand up for. E, encouragement. Encouragement is the experience of supporting one another outwardly without attachment to the outcome, but it starts within where we must become our own cheerleader. And despite what we've been taught about selfishness and egoism, if you treat yourself as your number one and I do the same, and so does everyone else, where is the number two? The answer is there wouldn't be one because it is only when we put others before ourselves that we bring that energy into the equation. Hurting people hurt people because they feel inferior and need to steal power. Healed people heal people because they are present in the moment where all power exists and can encourage others without comparison. That is powerful, full of power. <clears throat> Find your tribe is the missing link for those who feel isolated and limited by the judgments and projections of others, especially in a culture as fake as the one we've currently got. The realistic evidence appearing legit in tomorrow's yesterday, reality, is that so few people actually like themselves that they will throw garbage into your inner kingdom if you'll let them, just to make sure you continue running in circles where they can track with you. Kick out the polluters and toxic influences in your life to make space for something that will serve you better and release yourself from the guilt of putting distance between yourself and lower vibing individuals who need you to stay small in order to steal your power. When you are strong enough to be your authentic self and stand in your power, they can choose to raise the bar and join you or not, but that's up to them. Join others willing to do the same in the name of being the change we seek in this world with peaceful inner warriors united and untied. Understand what's yours is the way you can play with life even when others try to spray their limitations your way. Use this as your umbrella to filter external projections that don't belong to you, nor even necessarily originated with the one spraying them your way in the first place. Few people knew how to use the umbrella of discernment when they got hit by the projections they took on. Tune into how things make you feel and ask yourself, is this mine? Listen for the answer that comes from within as your subconscious will respond with yes or no, so you can then move to the next question. Can I let this go? Once you hear the reply ask, will I let this go? And if not, why not? Start to track your stories and recognize how many of them were never yours in the first place. 
Practice this simple four step, this simple four question process so that you can redirect your attention onto something that will serve you better than the BS others will try to infect you with and do your best to spend less time with those who drain your energy. Energy vampirism is very real and you can tell when you've been someone's meal by how you feel. Get away, recharge, and get your umbrella ready for next time as the higher you vibe, the more you'll need it. Love what arises because it's revealing itself to be healed whether you feel ready for it or not. Each emotion has its own personality because in the past we tended to suppress, repress, depress, compress, or deny the energies in motion we didn't know how to handle. In the process, we left behind an aspect of ourselves that has yet to receive the acceptance that we all crave. So now it is time for us to stop taking a pill to chill instead of be still with the part of us that's ready to be given a chance at life. It's time to do some inner kingdom excavating with full readiness to feel the discomfort of those aspects of ourselves that are now ready to heal. Remember, we must feel our way through the growing pains without trying to get comfortable in an uncomfortable process. Prepare to comfort yourself through the discomfort in functional ways by practicing full presence despite the pain, shame, or blame of needing to reclaim lost aspects of yourself. What healing into wholeness you do heals you and many generations forward and backwards in your lineage too. So dare to do the inner work for all of you, whether you are recognized or appreciated for it or not. People like the familiar patterns they know, so don't take it personally if others don't like the changes you're making in your life. Let go of your attachments to the not now means releasing yourself from the crosses you have crucified yourself on along your path. In Clarissa Pinkola Este's book, Women Who Run With the Wolves, she recommends a process called Descansos, which is the process of reflecting on your life to pinpoint all the choice point moments when something in or about you died right there on that spot, where your journey was halted unexpectedly and you left a part of yourself behind. You can do a timeline with crosses to mark each spot that shaped you and irrevocably changed you that irrevocably changed your life and the lives of others too, which often leads to trauma bonding with those also left behind or who have shared a similar experience. Be careful with these kinds of connections for they can't afford for you to heal without risking losing the trauma bond on which your relationship is based. It is time to take your experiences to the quarry station where you can mine them for their lessons without having to carry the weight of the trauma with you any longer. And if the thought of letting go of what no longer serves you feels terrifying, dare to love the part of you that has been crushed underneath the debris of this memory ever since it happened. When you turned your back on yourself because you didn't know how else to cope, you are no longer alone, for you now have access to tools you didn't before. Inner. Inner is also an acronym for individual needs necessitate emotional resonance, resilience, and respect. Not necessarily in that order, though it was the way it came together for me. Resonance is about harmony and discord. From a law of attraction perspective, it means like attracts like in a universe that does not differentiate negatives. So where our focus goes, our energy flows. The universe is eager to serve us from the cosmic kitchen of creation. We just have to get clear about what we want and use our contrast to help us gain clarity about what those undesirable circumstances or experiences helped us see we want instead of that. So instead of resenting negative or draining circumstances and situations, we can see them as opportunities to be more intentional in our creative process moving forward. Resilience is about bouncing back emotionally when life doesn't go the way we'd planned or when things go even better than we'd expected and we need to get regrounded in a higher level reality than we used to have. We expect to need to bounce back after a low, but rarely do we consider the need to accommodate new highs. It's why so many lottery winners lose all the money they won and find themselves in debt on top of the winnings they burned through. Learning to maneuver the high rise of emotional awareness helps to love what arises and let go of attachments to energies that are meant to be in motion. So dare to care for your inner health and well-being as much as you do your physical form. 
The healthier we are emotionally, the easier it becomes to stay strong despite the storms of change that come to test our commitment to becoming whole at the soul level. Respect. Respect is directly tied to a healthy self-esteem because we set a high value on that which we respect or admire. But rarely are we taught to genuinely respect ourselves instead of the worldly attributes of status, title, and fame we're awarded for how we play the game of life. This relates to the story of a house built on sand that will cave under pressure from the elements compared to the house built on solid ground. External trappings of success are like the house on sand that has no thing, nothing, to stand on when the winds of change blow away the foundation we didn't take time to thoroughly secure before building. Inner work is solid because it cannot be stripped away despite the chaos of the world we live in, especially where the currency we currently place so much importance on is determined by authority, who also benefit from the trust we've been raised to believe we must place outside of ourselves. If the concept of fiat currency is new to thee, you will see how everything we've been taught had worth or, and value has not been what it seems. My fear has been how many will fall when the old system crumbles and all that's been deemed valuable no longer carries any weight. Rebuilding community connections is part of a strong foundation for civilizations, and now is our time to create a better future with the ones who will live it and who came here with keys and insights we have let yet to find because we thought the holders of them too young to be part of the process. That's BS. Growing up is not tied to a number and those in young bodies possess great wisdom. It is our responsibility to hold space for them to feel safe enough to bring forward and put into practice. With eyes to see the lies we've been sold for generations, including the karmic repercussions of acting against our divine nature in the name of fulfilling orders we are paid to complete, we must seriously ask ourselves a sacred and significant question. What is the point of gaining the whole world while losing our soul in the process? Wars are fought by men and women on behalf of man-made nations we identify with, believe ourselves to belong to, and are willing to die to defend within its borders because we love our people. Soldiers get paid to wear dog tags for the elites, which I hate to say because it sounds judgmental of the ones wearing them, but do we judge pets wearing tags just because it shows who owns them? No, we feel for them, especially when their masters are cruel and unworthy of the positions of authority they hold. Messengers have been killed for delivering controversial messages throughout history because so many are looking to be offended and have a reason to take out their rage and frustration on something they can steal power from. They take such messages personally without realizing the ally, their person, is not. As I have found with my own and share, dare to share in hopes, we can begin to respect ourselves and selves enough to stop accruing karma that isn't ours by causing harm, loss, and fraud to our fellow man and woman who feel trapped in a corrupted system too. Soldiers are duty-bound to fulfill orders they may or may not agree with, just as the public servants working for governmental bodies are required to do and the corporate dogs who must bite when their boss tells them to. The HR professional, the HR personnel, who also are accruing karma by creating policies and procedures that coerce employees to participate in an experiment of control, corruption, and intentional chaos, never thought they'd find themselves in this category. But grocery store personnel didn't expect to become frontline workers either, yet it happened. That being said, the warrior is an archetype, familiar pattern, that gets filled, with, that gets filled in with energy that is either scared or sacred. And we get to choose which side we will fill. The con video game, the con vid game, and corporate entities rely on us being scared, so beware the switching of sides. According to Carol and Mrs. book, Sacred Contracts, which is all about archetypes, a warrior in his or her shadow, scared side, will sell their power on the open market, often with complete disregard for the buyer's cause. But when empowered, acting on the sacred side, knows what they will not sell out for regardless of the proposed reward. Soldiers and officers of the law are often forced into their scared side because they are not free to choose which orders they follow for their identity as directly tied to their position. Knights are the same, with a K, 
because it's about noxus, gnosis, which is knowledge, don't you know? That's not in the book, yo. I'll get back to the facts. Knights are the same because they had to take a knee to be knighted and surrender their free will to fulfill the whims of the one they bowed down to. Corporate, corporate employees at all levels must do the same to hold their position. When on, the, when on the sacred side, this part of us can warn us when we are in danger of aligning our might with an unjust or purely self-interested cause. But it's easy to flip into the scared side of this archetype when tipped off internally without a safe place to turn as I experienced in 2019 and tried to call the embassy to say I was more significant than it seemed at the time. In case you ever feel like you've become a threat to an unseen force, that know how powerful you are in this game, don't try that. You'll find your whole country is supposed to be safe, and but who else would be crazy enough to try what I did back then and be surprised by the result? I asked jokingly for yet again, that is what you should not do. Now let that be a lesson to you. A Bernstein Bear quote that I referenced earlier on because it was my mom's favorite and it's pretty awesome. So. I hadn't considered the shadow side of an archetype I've always had and assumed the warrior archetype is more common than has proved to be true. We often take our inherent strengths for granted and apply them to others without seeing the archetypes they have in place of the ones we project onto them because they're so active within us. Carolyn says we share the four survival archetypes, victim, child, saboteur, and prostitute, and then have eight that are unique to us. The warrior is one of mine and judging others for not having it only plays into the divide and conquer war strategy that's been implemented against us to keep us weak. During my awakening, I called out patterns I'd become aware of that hurt people I love and acted in ways I would regret if it helped, but instead can only say I'm genuinely sorry to everyone I hurt in the process of outing dysfunctional patterns. I'd become aware of without grace or compassion for the discomfort doing so caused others. When I then got put in a situation that only the universe could have orchestrated, just as my shattered heart was starting to heal, my beloved grandma, who'd always been my best friend and confidant, got stuck in quarantine for her final months alive, without understanding why the family she devoted her life to said we couldn't come to see her due to hospital protocols. It was devastating, and without her to call for peace and civility, we fractured, just as the con video game program intended, or at least that was my experience of it. My warrior heart built up a wall that kept everyone except my papa at a distance, as he had remained faithful to me when I felt others had not been, and they felt the same about me. People will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel, and there's been a lot of hurt on both sides through all of this that now needs openness and compassion to heal if willingness is present. In marketing, there's a saying, some will, some won't, who cares next? And while that's reality in business, we must remember that we are the players on the field. So making peace with one another by owning our part in damaged dynamics goes a long way in the bigger picture where we all count and matter. I channeled my pain into building new community connections by trying to find others who saw the corruption as I did and were willing to do something about it, but found myself giving up on the blue pillars, just as the evil had counted on. And while my realization came late, I believe we choose our fate, and it's time to shift the hate we've let grow between one another, for I believe this has been a common experience through this con game, where shame and blame are tools to remain safely separate behind heart walls we deny we have up. Denial. Didn't even know I am lying. I see this pattern in many of the freedom fighters who have become isolated from loved ones in the name of sharing an ugly truth that isn't safe enough for fearful people to accept without a better solution for them to turn to. Warriors are used to fighting for what we believe in, and there are many who will lash back to protect and defend what they know to keep themselves feeling safe. But we cannot win this war by abandoning one another, for it is our souls that are on the line, and doing so means we are covertly helping the evil win. There is no running from this, 
because we are the ones driving the planes, dropping bombs and chemtrails that change the weather patterns and poison the common lands we came here to leave better for our having lived. We are the ones who will be faced with an order that takes a life we are liable for the loss of when our soul leaves and recounts all we did while here. So let's steer clear of accruing karma on behalf of a corpse that needs us to think we are less significant than we are. Resistance, resentment, and revenge are the dysfunctional R's that lead us into our scared side where regret is generally the reward, and pride tends to keep us from fully feeling the pain of this dysfunctional dynamic until it's too late. Let's not wait to find compounded passion, compassion for one another during this scary time in our shared story. Love is the solution that fear needs us to forget, so, we, so may we remember we are all in this together. My hope is that these words can inspire some of those working for the devil, lived backwards, to step into their sacred side of the archetypes within. Not everyone has a warrior archetype within them, as has been made clear within the collective. During the early stages of this war of terrorism, we are all called to untie our identities from, but we all share the victim, child, prostitute, and saboteur, who become guardians in their sacred sides. For too long, the public cry has been for the war on terrorism by strategists who knew this would only grow the very focus of those efforts, war and terror. The law of non-resistance says what we resist persists, so may we shift our focus and bring love back into the frame. As many have discovered pushing back against the system has a high cost, but not all is yet lost, and we must do our part to start dealing with the war within between the scared and sacred sides of our own personalities. United we stand, divided we fall, scrambled we find, united to be untied from the lies of the Matrix. The leaders of our homes didn't know they were telling. Forgive them for they know not what they do, and choose to be the example that helps them change their ways. By winning the war within, we can begin to balance the scales of justice by recognizing how divide and conquer has been the war strategy used to tear nuclear families apart in a war we weren't told we were in. Just like the farmer whose son's accident saved him from a war that wasn't his to fight, we can only find our place when we are willing to hold our space with grace. Not because someone told us to or paid us to do it, but because we saw the common hue of convenient enemies, we were taught to hate, distrust, and fear in the name of protecting ours and gaining theirs where possible. There are no winners when we become sinners, because we followed orders that fragmented our souls and made us less whole. The end of chapter 17. Chapter 18 is psychosis, the crazy ones, choice points and survival archetypes. We'll not be getting into that today. However, it is to say that active choice point theory is one that I have included because we must see how on one side it is a reactive pattern we follow compared to the other, which is the creative one. And while I didn't label it in here, it is up for you to have some fun and figure out the better option for you and see that that is the creative one. I am grateful that you tuned in with me today for that reading and will say that if you are interested in actually gaining a copy or gaining access to a copy of Fully Committed, The Sacred Sojourn of Now by yours truly, you can do so on Amazon. There is also an audio version of it on Audible. If you have a subscription, I would love for you to gain access to my reading of it at seven hours and four minutes. So it's not a short text. However, I do hope that everything included within it serves you just as I do hope this chapter did too. So please leave a comment to let me know. I will post this message onto my YouTube channel and would very much appreciate you're leaving your comment there, giving it a like and a share, because ultimately the algorithms, when we come together to support one another and messages of heart that matter, 
Um, it really helps me and those who will see my message because you shared it since I'm pretty heavily shadow banned, I'll admit. So yeah, <laughs> all of that is the truth so far as Laura J sees it's to be today. So I'm going to say have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for tuning in. And I look forward to your feedback, your comments, your perspectives. And if you already have a copy of the book and you want to, uh, actually do a review i would so appreciate that too because ultimately the more honest perspectives come in it allows others to make an informed choice when we all have so many options as to which books we will read and use to feed the soul which is ultimately how we become more whole so peace have a great day lord j namaste namago for today <laughs>